Teresa and I um, have been corresponding for a while, and we discovered that our poetry covers some similar ground. Teresa is a refugee from the Vietnam War, and I'm a person who was a soldier in that Vietnam War. And we, we're putting together a collection of poems in, that's, in a book that's going to be coming out probably by the end of October. And it's in five sections. Uh, and so we'll start reading a couple of these things. The first section is dealing with parent-child relationships. So I'll read a poem about my son, for example, and then Teresa will read a poem uh, as, about her father. And we'll go back and forth with that for a couple of poems. So here goes. Um, this is my poem to Josh, my son turning 13. Sorry. To Josh turning 13. If non vets were ancient shamans, now would be the moment we choose to give you shelter from the coming storm. But we are merely survivors of suburbs and cities, not forest nor mountain. Modern men offering you our silences, our words to guide you going out on your own. Yet we have known for years now that the silences of our fathers will not do. And we have known that words alone cannot bleed you free of your raging doubts. So listen up to what we have found between silences and words. Open up your fists, watch women move, scorn uniforms, don't march, dance. Thank you, Doug. I just wanted to say really quickly too, I am very grateful for you, Doug, and Veterans for Peace. And I realize as we're on this journey and listening to you all reading and presenting like during the Memorial Day Convention as well, how our healing are intertwined. And it gives, it really warms my heart to see how much work you all do as veterans to heal the wounds and to advocate for peace. So I really wanna thank you for that. My father spent nine years in a Viet Cong re-education camp. And when I first met him, I was nine years old. He was taken away while my mom was pregnant with me and this poem is dedicated to him. When I first saw daddy, he was like an Egyptian cat, skinny, foraging and stern just released from a Viet Cong prison. He told us he hated the color red. 16 years later, he wears a red sweatshirt and smiles. The pin tip opening in his heart enough to let in a driblet of red. I love that poem. I love that poem. Thank you. Okay, so here's these are poems from our section called Parent-Child Relationships from our upcoming book. So here's a second poem for me, and then Teresa will read one, and then we'll be done. This one's a short one. It's called Dad's Song. Sit beside me, and we'll sing along with the meadows, the swallows, and the stone wall. You and me under the tree, backs to the wall, watching the swallows be. Thank you, Doug. This poem is called Photosynthesis, and it was written for my son. Photosynthesis. How can I convince you that you do have chlorophyll, that you can take the sun's energy and turn it into sugar, produce something sweet inside of you, take the waste people breathe out and make it into something that will keep you alive, that will keep those around you alive. Create oxygen. Why do you say that this metaphor doesn't work, that you don't have the powers of a plant, that nature didn't intend you that way? Look how you twist and turn towards the light. Keep going. <laughs> Keep going, Doug. I want to hear all of these right now. <laughs> okay, this next section, okay, until you stop us. This next section is called The Suffering of Children During War. My poem is entitled A Soldier's Lament. They came every day to sit beneath the barbed wire. They came to sell us what they would, a comb, a ring, a sister, if they could. They came to torture us, these children of the dust, with their eyes, with their lies, the ice in their smiles to torture us with their lives. They came and now they will not leave. They came and now our souls blister and burn across the years above the bonfires of children's curses. Thank you, Doug. 
Hmong. A whole village is blanketed in aerial spray of chemical genocide. The soft clouds cover mountaintops. In a field, a grandmother carries her grandchild in a pouch on her back as she works. Their heartbeats synchronize. People who are connected to the earth know its secrets, medicinal, weather, plants for dying. A woman is sewing between her fingers. The needle dives into cloth and emerges, pulling along colored patterns, stories and customs into handmade clothing. Mung is a word that means freedom. It is difficult to cross the Mekong River to a refugee camp without getting killed. How many dead flowers are scattered about the land? When the War Begins, Section 3. This poem's entitled Leaving the Induction Center. We are now all riders on those olive drab government buses, trying to make some sense of this thing they called military justice. Still a bunch of miners digging about in our own little ruins, burrowing through the dangerous trash of our own silly illusions. We're all of us just drifters caught up in a dirty little war, left to ride it out alone on our own thin little prayers. Thank you, Doug. The decade the rainforest died, the deer did not stop running. Leopards climbed into trees that could not hide them. The Duke Lanker and the white-cheeked Gibbon cursed at the metal gods we flew, raining on them as they burned from napalm. Elephants choked on the smoke of gunpowder and poison, their steps a strange rhythm as they tried to fly. The thunder of bombs echoed the steps of elephants. Tigers exploded as they stepped onto landmines. In a forest covered with leaves dead from Agent Orange, fallen trees and decomposing bodies of animals and people. The earthworms were washed away in monsoons with soil that could no longer grab onto roots. The Javan rhinoceros and the wild water buffaloes that were still alive wandered aimlessly Weary with M16s and AK-47s, we marched quietly and steadily, not knowing why we were killing each other. Section four is when the war ends. On being invisible. So you come home from a war alone and within a week, the first place you want to be is the bleachers of Fenway Park. One of many, where no one knows who you were last week with your freaked out sense of mortality. Incoming, you caught out in the open last day in country, burying your face in the mud, becoming the mud. Please, dear God, please make me disappear and not be me and I'll never ever want to be anything more ever again. I'm looking to be as diaphanous as the deer by the apple tree lost in the morning mist. Here today, gone tomorrow, nothing more, nothing less. Just let me come home and rest in the bosom of Wallace Stevens. For the listener who listens in the snow and nothing himself beholds nothing that is not there and the nothing that is. Amen, brothers and sisters. Amen. Thank you, Doug. Immigration. It is October when the winds of autumn blow strong in the Pacific. There are over 2,000 of us, sardines, barely human and starving. We sleep on the floor and wash ourselves with seawater. People are sick. When someone dies from sickness, she or he is wrapped in a blanket and tossed overboard during a Buddhist chant. I was only two years old and cannot recollect the dying next to me, nor can I recollect my constant coughing nor can I recall seeing my mother's worried countenance as she contemplated our future, how my constant crying made her want to jump overboard. Okay. Um, these are based on true stories of my family experience. 
cockroaches, a proposal by someone to my mom after the Vietnam War. Why don't you sell your baby? You don't have anything to eat. A response by my four-year-old brother. No, don't sell my sister. There are lots of cockroaches for us to eat. When I returned to the country 18 years later, I saw them, large, brown, shiny tanks on the wall, evidence of my brother's love for me. Oh, I can remember those cockroaches. <laughs> oh my gosh. Last section entitled Moral Injury. This is a, po a poem entitled The Girl and a Picture. It's for Fan T. Kim Phuc. And those of us who are familiar with the Vietnam War know the girl in the picture is her running from the village, uh, which is being napalmed. I begin it with an aphorism. Whatever you run from becomes your shadow. Whatever you run from becomes your shadow. If you're a non-vet, a survivor of sorts, she'll come for you across the decades, casting a shadow in the dying light of your dreams, naked and nine, terror in her eyes. Of course, you'll have to ignore her if you wish to survive over the years, but then your daughters will turn nine, and then your granddaughters nine, as the shadows lengthen. So you'll have no choice on that one night screaming down the ridge road, lights off under a full moon. She's standing in the middle of the road, still naked and nine, terror in her eyes. Now you must stop to pick her up, to carry her back home to where she came from, to that gentle village where the forgiving and the forgiven gather at high noon. There are no shadows. Thank you, Doug. That re rewriting of memory and history as we create the how we could have. And thank you. It's really moving. Moral injury, justice. In the end, only kindness matters. When the American war in Vietnam began, my father was studying law. In his second year of high school, he was forced into the Army of the Republic of Vietnam, where he worked in the Ministry of Justice for 10 years. Later, he became a lieutenant, then captain. As a judge in the courts of the Ministry of Justice, my father convicted communists during the war, sentencing them to Konson Island. He said, so that they would live there and not be able to fight us. I visited Konson Island decades later, offering incense and prayers to the prisoners and the deceased. Seeing the prison systems, now museums, and the cruelty, the shackles, the tiger cages, I realized what my father had done. My father was guilty, and I even felt guilty. Did he know what he was doing when he sentenced someone? Did he deserve to be imprisoned? after the war? Did I deserve to be without a father for nine years? How can we see through this fog of war when right and wrong swirl and swirl within each other long after the war is over? Thank you, Teresa. And that's the uh, completion of our reading. Thanks all of you for uh, listening. Our wow. Book is coming out. <laughs>